Uh, that's a pretty good check, hey. Okay. Pretty good one. Uh, I love having a mullet because I hate it when women try to have sex with me. So the mullet's really doing the heavy lifting in that regard. Okay. Yeah. They're a strange phenomenon in society though, mullets. Uh, no other haircut exists that I know of where you can just look at someone and be like, oh, there's a degenerate, you know, a stain on society. And uh, usually it is a pretty good tell, I'll admit, but uh, I actually consider myself to be a bit of an outlier in the mullet community uh, for a couple reasons, okay? Firstly, I know about the word outlier. Okay? <laughs> And secondly, I don't do any business in McDonald's car parks, okay? <laughs> Not anymore. It's well behind the place, though, so. Yeah, it sort, of, um, it sort of makes me look like a bogan Peter Pan type character. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm sort of like the boy that never grew up. Ah, like, hell. Like, Lost Boys? Lost Boys? Yeah. Wendy, Wendy's really hassling me because I keep spending all the money on fairy dust, hey, so, yeah. Those jokes never, never land, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, one's, that one's always good. Yeah, but having a mullet, people do say strange things to you. Like, I had someone come up to me the other day, and uh, they were like, oh, Tom, does the, the carpet match the drapes? And so just to clear anything up, yes, I do also have a dick mullet. Uh, if, you, if you're wondering what that is, pretty much I just shave all the pubes like above my dick. I just let the ones on my balls grow out like as long as physically possible. Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, so hard to keep up with the fashion trends. You know, really so. uh, I'm circumcised. Uh, just a regular one, not like a weird mullet circumcision, that would be disgusting. Uh, just a, the classic. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, although I did, it's not that typical, because I didn't take the traditional route of uh, baby mutilation for mine. I actually, uh, I got an adult circumcision, which is it's about as fun as it sounds, really. Uh, it made it a... Uh, Pretty obvious to me why, like the vast majority of the time, they do it to like babies that don't know how to speak. Because I don't know if any of you guys have ever had someone like try to cut off part of your dick. But uh, usually, if you can speak, you'll say something like, Please, God, no. Uh, take my hands instead. You know? <laughs> something like that. Uh, the only experience I can really compare it to is sort of like sort of like getting a haircut for my dick, you know? Like a dick trim sort of sort of vibe. Just went in there, I was like, oh it's a bit off the top, thanks mate. Yeah. <laughs> dick trim. Got a wedding coming up, so we're looking for photos and stuff. Uh, and you get that like post haircut regret as well. When you're like looking in the mirror like Oh, for sake, hey. He's taking too much off, hey. Instead trim, he's taking the whole bloody thing. Yeah. Well, oh, everyone loves a good circumcision joke, that's for sure. Uh, um, it's good to have the arts back, good to have some live music. I haven't seen a band in like a, a year, and then I saw one the other day. It reminded me of the first time I actually saw a band. Uh, it was a pretty wild one, if I'm honest. Uh, pretty, pretty loose night. It was the early 2000s uh, Wiggles East Coast tour. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it was... It might have been Wiggly Wiggly Christmas, that album, but uh, maybe, maybe Chugga 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 Big Red, big red Car, actually. That was the big, the big one. But yeah, it was a pretty typical music event, you know? Like, uh, few loose units getting around, uh, the, a guy shot himself near me, you know what I mean? So, uh, he, he needed his nappy change. Um, yeah, like, uh, someone got coward punched in the hot potato mosh, so he got pretty, 
pretty heavy in there. There's a few drugs going around, you know, mainly Ritalin because some people are having problems concentrating. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a, a lady actually flashed her breasts at, at the Wiggles. Um, she was breastfeeding, but you know, it's still rock and roll, you know. Uh, you know, all the Wiggles was there. Jeff, Jeff was fucked. He pretty much was, didn't wake up the whole time. Uh, yeah. It was really good. Love the Wiggles. The only member that really sort of irks me is Captain Feathersword. Like, I don't know how he got the job. Hey, like, I don't know who went, oh, this, yeah, this sort of, like, rapey pirate guy with a feather sword. Like, he should work with children. That's what, that's what should happen. Hey. Um, cause like, where do you really get a feather sword anyway? Like, is, is, is he working as a dominatrix on the side or something? Like, what is, like, you don't get that from anywhere except like some unsavory adult store, hey. Yeah. Um, sports back, I've been watching, watching a bit of sport, uh, watching rugby league, I'm from Queensland. I was actually watching the female state of origin the other day with a friend of mine, and she was explaining to me that in the female league, like different to the male league, they have, they have this issue, like they lose a lot of their best players when they, when they get pregnant and decide to raise a family. And uh, it's, um, it's, a, it's a big problem, well not a problem, but you know, something you have to work through. Because they, have, they come with this choice, you know, either keep, keep the baby and put their career on hold or terminate the pregnancy and continue playing, playing the, the game they love. But I actually think there's a third option that they're overlooking, and that's why not play through the pregnancy and use the extra cushioning for hit-ups? You know what I mean? It's a good idea. And you just know that kid's going to be the best rugby league player. <laughs> you know? He's, he's going to bust out of there like placenta under the arm, like stiff-arming the doctor. You know, He'll be a real prodigy. You know, probably assault charges at four years old, like a real good one, yeah. <laughs> um, koalas have been copping it a bit lately. Uh, yeah, it's been a rough year for koalas. The ones that uh, didn't die in the fires are actually riddled with chlamydia. Yeah, so just uncomfortable burning sensations across the board for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, I didn't like those fires, so don't blame me. Uh, yeah, it is a big problem though, chlamydia, in the koala population. Um, that's just a fact, that's not even a joke, that is riddled with the stuff. But uh, it's made a lot worse by a lesser known fact, which is koalas actually hate using condoms. Okay? They, they're all about the koala bareback, you know what I mean? They're all, all in for that. I don't know if we need some like eucalyptus flavoured condoms or something to like get them on board. Those very little nymphos, man, they just really go for it. Um, it does beg the question though, like how did koalas come to have chlamydia in the first place? And uh, I've thought about it, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I've worked it out, okay? So it's pretty simple. So the reason koalas have chlamydia is because at some point, a koala had sex with a German backpacker. Yeah. Okay? So I'm pretty sure that's how most people get it, okay? And if you look at koalas and you look at backpackers, like as groups, they got chlamydia levels well above the average. Okay. And is it a coincidence that every backpacker has a photo holding a koala? Oh. Like, come on. What sort of racket are these zoos operating, you know? Bindi and Bob Irwin's Australian Fox Safari or what? It's a national disgrace. See, you got enough eucalyptus leaves, you can get those guys to pretty much do anything, I reckon, hey. But yeah, well, I think that's pretty close to 10. Hey, thank you very much. I'm Tony Musgrave. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks, Tony, for sharing your self-decision. Um, are we killing the mullet or is it a trend? I don't know. <laughs>
poor koalas as well, hey? Um, great. All right, let's move on to, we've got uh, Emily Weir. 